Thanks for coming. Uh, I'd like to get started by everybody just telling everybody else what you do, how you do it, why you're here, what you want to get out of this, and uh, I guess we can start with uh, Diane, but maybe she already said what she wants to say. Well, I'll say it again. Again, my role is joint uh, with the Greater Reading Chamber of Commerce and the Manufacturers Resource Center out of Bethlehem, PA. Um, the Manufacturers Resource Center is a state and federally funded organization to help manufacturing companies. And that's where my effort is spent with the chamber to, uh, again, in Berks County, what can we do to help manufacturing companies, we like to say, transform, uh, transform their operations, grow their business. We know it's crucial to the local economy. And we've put a lot of effort behind that. Kurt Hartung, operations manager, uh, Phillips Van Heusen. We primarily handle uh, guys on product, Van Heusen product, distributed to the stores, um, Jason Penny, Belt, Longton, Macy's, Boscoff's, any eyes on product you see out there comes out of our warehouse. Uh, so we're distribution, we don't manufacture, and like I said, unfortunately, everything nowadays is overseas. We bring the product in, take a packet, <coughs> it out to the customer. My name is Tamara Jones, I'm president of Metal Thruway. Uh, we're a metal distributor and metal service center, and we actually work alongside uh, a lot of manufacturing companies and make finished products for them uh, that goes into the things that they are manufacturing. <clears throat> we also recently uh, started a uh, distributorship uh, with a new company that just moved to a, a tap industry. from Crossroads Beverage Group. We do bottled water. Um, we've been in the area for about a year now, and uh, manufacturing is new to me. And uh, you know, to, in order to expand our plant, that's why I'm here today to learn, learn how to do that. <laughs> I'm Christy Nettles. <coughs> Titus Company. We do nitrogen compressors. So um, our compressors are used in the manufacturing process. I'm new to manufacturing as well, and we're looking to uh, double the size of our manufacturing facility right now. Okay. I'm Scott with the uh, Rose Corporation, uh, production manager. We're uh, a custom steel plate fabricator for, for industry, industrial purposes. And uh, you know we've been you know we've been looking at doing a couple capital projects. And you know one of the main things that always comes up is the financing and uh, you know finding the right money or or knowing what's out there to you know to get the ball rolling on some of these projects so this could be interesting for me as well okay your custom mill yes my name is charlotte Kishanik. i'm the controller at custom milling and consulting um we're looking at expanding for the second time in a little over two years uh, except this building is much bigger and a lot more expensive than our last endeavor two years ago so we're just trying to see what's out there okay good good and uh, I'm Sam Macrina. I do uh, tax exempt, tax free financing for manufacturers throughout Pennsylvania. And uh, I would like to hope that we can make this very interactive, especially if you have projects that you're working on now, because then we can really bring it down to reality. Okay, so what I want to first cover is. Uh, The things that you need to remember when you leave here today, okay? And the most important thing to remember is when you do a tax-free financing package, the interest rates will be 35% below market. It will be 35% lower than if you did a regular commercial loan. And I'll explain later why that is. So that's the most important factor, the fact that interest expense uh, to a manufacturer uh, under this program could be your lowest cost of capital. Now, there's always misconceptions about tax-free financing. You do not have to create any jobs, okay? No job creation required. 
You don't have to pay prevailing wages. So if you're doing a, a brand new building, you don't have, in Pennsylvania, you don't have to pay prevailing wages. That's not the case in New Jersey. In New Jersey, if you do this, you have to pay prevailing wages. And that basically negates the savings that you get under this particular program. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're with uh, Traeger? Yes. Okay, maybe you can introduce yourself and okay. then grab some. I don't want to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Uh, my name is Brad Gammons. I'm with Traeger Corporation. I'm the manufacturer of aluminum castings in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. And we do CNC machine for those castings. And you used to be a doctor, right? No. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing is you don't need a letter of credit. You know, if you if you go to your bank, chances are, if you ask them for tax exempt financing, they probably won't know what you're talking about. And if they do know what you're talking about, they're probably going to say, "Well, you need a letter of credit," and we don't like doing letters of credit because. The problem with letter of credits these days is that the bank takes on all the risk and they don't make enough money for a letter of credit, so they don't like doing it anymore. Uh, you can borrow anywhere from $500 to $10 million in any one municipality. We'll cover that a little bit later. And this particular program is offered to manufacturing companies. Okay. Uh, funds have to be used for capital assets, you know, so you got to use them for forklifts, uh, CNC machines, uh, mixing machines, uh, real estate, you can buy a piece of real estate, and you can refinance an existing tax exempt loan. I'm sure most of you don't have a tax exempt loan, but if you did have one, you could refinance an existing tax exempt loan. And if anyone has any questions as we go, please don't hesitate to ask. Now this is just a chart. The red graph shows you basically what a commercial loan would cost you in interest rate. And the blue one shows the tax exempt rate. Remember I said the tax exempt rate is typically 35% lower than the red line. Here's a real life example. Uh, anybody like unique pretzels? Okay, so unique pretzels uh, in October closed on a tax exempt transaction. It was uh, basically seven million for real estate, or no, six million for real estate and 2.6 million for uh, equipment. Now I can talk to you about this because it's public information. The tax exempt loan has to go through the IBA. It has to be advertised. So it's not like I'm a banker giving out, you know, information that I shouldn't be giving out. Uh, but in this particular case, if they had taken a conventional commercial loan at 5%, over the life of the loan, they would have paid about $14.2 million, okay? Tax exempt, the same loan, they wound up paying, they will wind up paying about $11.9 million. That's a saving of $2.2 million over the life of the loan. As uh, Justin Spanish from Unique said, he said, that's a lot of pretzels. This is uh, just a picture of the uh, brown break, uh, breaking ceremony. Uh, the lady over here, uh, Secretary Newhouse from uh, Harrisburg, Department of Community and Economic Development. And right next to her, as you go to the left, our left, are the Spaniards. Uh, okay, your typical expansion project, okay? Your, your typical expansion project in Pennsylvania should consist of three components. One, everybody that's doing a real estate expansion should apply for PETA. That's the number one, and if you applied last month, you probably, you would get an interest rate of one and a half percent, okay? The other program you should look to next is MELF. That's for machinery and equipment. And again, if you applied for that last month, you, you would have gotten an interest rate of 1.5 percent. And those two programs work well 
with the last program, which is tax exempt. The last piece of your financing package should be the tax exempt piece, okay? Now, what you have to be careful of is when you apply for PETA and you apply for MEL, sometimes at the end of the process, you may not get the money you asked for. So typically, what I tell my clients is, let me approve you for the whole package tax exempt. Whatever PETA brings to the table or MELF brings to the table, will back it down from the tax exempt piece, okay? So the tax exempt piece will fill in or complement or supplement PETA and MELF. Any questions so far? Anybody have any experience with PETA, MELF, any of those programs? You want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, we applied for MELF when we first came in for some equipment financing, and there are lots of hoops to jump through. It took a while, but we, we got what what they committed to, and um, it's, it's a long process. Now, how did you finance? You know, MELF only finances a piece of it. They right. don't do the whole thing. Uh, how the, did you? The, um, the, um, vendor for the equipment financed the bulk of it. Okay. So. Is it, was it a lease? Was it a, a, a purchase? purchase? A purchase. We're purchasing it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Loan purchase. So that, le that lender or that vendor could have used tax exempt financing if they knew how to do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. By the way, speaking of water, bottle of water, you're, you're probably too young to remember this, but I remember watching TV and there was an advertisement. This is real. And it was three young guys sitting by a stream. They're smoking a joint, and uh, the one guy filled the bottle up with water. This was like 25 years ago, and he said, "Do you think people would buy this?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a big industry now, <laughs> you know. Okay. Any questions about combining peat and milk tax exempt? This here is geared more towards the economic development people. Pennsylvania is the, uh, the state, the largest state east of the Mississippi that offers tax exempt financing to manufacturing. Most, most of the other states do very little in that regard. This just blows it up a little bit. And then this is just an example of a $10 million project, uh, you know, typically a $10 million project might look like $6 million real estate as an example, $4 million for machinery and equipment. Part of it, the PETA loan may be a million or two of the total $6 million for the real estate. Uh, another $2 million might be for the MELF, and then the rest would be tax exempt financing. Now, since you're starting to become aware of tax exempt financing, you might hear it under names that uh, before you probably didn't pay much attention to. They might be called manufacturing bonds. Uh, they could be called industrial development bonds, small issue bonds, private activity bonds, or PEDFA bonds. Now, in Pennsylvania, most people that have done tax exempt financing have done it as a PEDFA bond. Okay? People don't like pet foot bonds. If you've been through it, you hate the process once you've been through it. Uh, and the reason you can't get those things done today is because of the letter of credit. The banks don't want to issue the letter of credit. The way the pet foot bonds work is the state of Pennsylvania collects all these tax exempt loans. Okay? Then they go out to the bond market, they take the pool of tax exempt loans, they go out to the bond market and they sell these loans. Now the bond investors, they don't want to take credit risk, okay? They just want to buy the bond and make sure they get their interest payment each month. <coughs> so because they don't want to take credit risk, that's why the bank has to issue a letter of credit. They want the bank to take the credit risk. But you got to catch 22. The bank doesn't want to take the credit risk either, at least not for 1.5% that they get for a letter of credit. So that complicated the process. So what we do is we don't do it as a bond issuance. We don't do it as a letter of credit. We do it as a regular commercial loan 
with a tax exempt component to it to reduce the interest rate. So you're dealing with our bank, you're dealing with a commercial lender, and you don't have to worry about all of these other things that you have to do with a bond issuance. Bond issuance is, is also very expensive. So here's, a, here's a, <coughs> what's called the composite pool. The composite pool is basically the bond issuance. The bottom, the standalone, that's where you go through a bank, and the bank actually does it as what's called a bank note. Okay? Users of tax exempt financing, it's not just for manufacturing, but manufacturer, manufacturing is pretty much the only business, profit making business, that can use tax exempt financing. Everybody else uh, is either a hospital, healthcare, universities, charter schools, charitable organization, airports, things of that nature. Manufacturing is the only business that can use tax exempt financing. <coughs> Now, tax exempt financing for manufacturers is defined under the Internal Revenue Code as the manufacturing or production of tangible property. Okay? So if you're taking water and you are doing something to it, like maybe taking some, I don't know, bacteria or dirt out of it and putting it in a bottle, that's manufacturing. If you're taking pigment and blowing, what do you call them? Those round things? The, oh, the mulch we do? Or? Well, whatever you do. I mean, you take, uh, you have balls that are flying throughout the... Oh, the media. The media, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's manufacturing. Uh, and in some cases, you have to make sure that it's manufacturing as it's defined under the Internal Revenue Code. And I use this example. Uh, is curing cheese manufacturing? So in this particular case, this is a real life case. The company, a company, made cheese. Whatever they do to make cheese, that's what they did. And they took that cheese and they shipped it to another company that blew air over the cheese with fans. The IRS said that was manufacturing. So, it's up to the IRS. Uh, is vegetable processing manufacturing? Take vegetables, wash them, put them in a bag, seal it, send them out, that's manufacturing as well. If you're doing, you know, taking metal, cutting it, welding it, that's manufacturing. Okay, now here's some bad projects. This is what the IRS would call a bad project, meaning it isn't manufacturing. Fish production is not manufacturing. If you kill them, slice them, put them in a bag, that's manufacturing. But if you're raising them, it's not manufacturing. Reverse vending machines uh, is not manufacturing. And mining and rock crushing is not manufacturing. Now, I did do a deal out in Indiana County. It involved mining and rock cutting. That is manufacturing. Because you took a machine and you cut the rock, that's manufacturing. Okay? Now, what are the eligible uses? Okay? 95% of the proceeds, the dollars that you get from the loan, uh, can be used for acquisition of land, construction, acquisition of a building, acquisition of machinery, equipment. Uh, only 25% of the total proceeds can go towards land. 25% or less has to go towards land, okay? Uh, building, you can use it for acquisition, engineering, uh, architectural, legal, title insurance, appraisals, those kinds of things. If you buy an existing building, one that's already up, at least 15% of the money has to go to improve the building. Okay? If you do new construction, all the money goes into the new construction project. But if you buy a new building, say for a million dollars, uh, 150,000 of that million has to go to make improvements to the building. Question? Will you be providing any sort of pamphlets or anything about all this stuff? This stuff here? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it to you as long as you agree not to give it to my competition. 
I'll give it to you. <laughs> okay? Uh, now, let's say you, you're, you have a construction project or you buy a new build, okay? And only a small percentage of that new building can be used for things other than manufacturing, okay? So let's say you put up a 100,000 square foot building, 50% uh, of it is manufacturing, the other 50% is sales, accounts receivables, account payable, department, HR. That won't work, okay? Only 25% of the building can be used for things uh, outside of manufacturing, okay? Now, if you have office space and it's for your, your plant supervisor, your engineer, uh, say you have a fitness room for the people that work out the plant, you know, those kinds of things. As long as they're related to manufacturing, it's good, okay? Now what happens if 30% of the building is going to be used for office and 70% is going to be used for manufacturing? Then you do two loans. One tax exempt, the other one taxable, okay? So there's always a way to skin a cat. Or you just give everyone new titles. <laughs> You can do that as long as the IRS doesn't come in. Question. Like the new facility we're thinking about putting up is going to be, at this point, like 50% warehousing, uh, maybe 20% manufacturing, and another 30% packaging. Okay. As long as you're warehousing either the material that goes into making the product mm -hmm. or the what comes out of making the product, okay? If you're warehousing, for example, Parts, uh, that's different. Okay, so you have to you have to make sure that it's the right kind of inventory that you're you're and packaging is fine. Yep. Good question. Did you have a question, Diane? Yep. No. Okay. Now uh, you can you can do tax exempt financing for used equipment if the equipment is part of the real estate that you purchase. And if you put 15% of the proceeds into upgrading the new equipment or the used equipment, okay? You know, I'll stop. Can you go over that again? Yeah, you, if you buy a building and it has used equipment in it, okay, you can use tax exempt financing for that used equipment. But what you have to do is you have to invest 15% of the tax exempt money to update the equipment to make it qualified. Just like you do the real estate. So the, the machinery would have to already be in the building. What if you already pur what if you purchase new equipment and you want to upgrade that? You you can purchase new equipment and put it into the building. That all qualifies. You may not be able to go out and purchase used equipment and bring it into the building. If it was part of the building when you purchased the building, then you can do it. <clears throat> already own a piece of used equipment. Right. And I use money to upgrade my equipment. Good question. Um, I'd have to check with bond council on that. I don't know the answer. That's a good question. It hasn't come up. Uh, so how much can you get? I already said you can get between five hundred and ten million dollars. Okay. You can get that amount in any municipality. Okay, that you are manufacturing. Okay, so let's say you have an operation in Maiden Creek, and you want to borrow ten million dollars in tax exempt to do a project there. Okay, and then you have an operation in Pittsburgh. You can get another ten million dollars there, <coughs> and then you have an operation in Philly. You can get another ten there, and. One in Williamsport, you can get another 10 there. Actually, you can get up to $40 million uh, total tax exempt throughout the country. Okay? So your limit, once you hit $40 million, you're done. You can't get any more tax exempt money. Okay? Most people don't spend $40 million. Go so ahead. The uh, 500000 that's the lowest. Yeah. Uh, now, here's an important rule. And, and this might apply, Debbie, to your situation, because you just came out of a, an expansion project. 
One of the IRS rules says that you have to look back three years and you have to look forward three years, okay? And what you have to look at is how much money did you spend for capital improvements, capital assets over the last three years and over the next three years. You can't spend more than $20 million over that six year period, okay? So you look back, let's use an example. Say a company spent $5 million over the last three years. They want to do a $10 million project today. Well, they can do it because they only, that would total $15 million over the next six years, back and forward three years. Everybody with me on that? Okay, now, what happens if you spend $6 million two years from now? Your tax exempt status goes out the window and you wind up paying the interest rate back at 5% instead of three and a quarter, okay? Now, if you spend it four years from now, you're okay, because it's only during the six year period, three years back and three years forward that you have to worry about. Now, I've seen people not use taxes and financing because they were afraid they're going to go over the $20 million. And you know, they, they did go over the $20 million, but they went over it two and a half years down the road. And they thought that the loan would become taxable from the date of closing if they spent $20 million or more, and it wasn't. So in effect, on $10 million, they could have saved $150,000 a year for the first two and a half years, still would have made sense to go tax exempt. Any questions on that? I know that could be a little cloudy. And I just went over the consequences of tax exempt. If, if you do something that violates the Internal Revenue Code, and really the things that you can do are going over the $20 million, uh, putting up a facility and doing things like turning it into a fitness center or a retail store, those things will knock you out of tax exempt financing, okay? But typically most manufacturers don't do that, so you really don't have to worry about it, okay? You can't use uh, tax exempt financing and an SBA loan. That's a, a federal rule. And uh, getting close to the end of the presentation. Go ahead. Go back to that. You said you can't use tax exempt financing and SBA as, as under the same loan. No, okay. they have to be two separate loans. Yeah, which is a, too bad, but it is. Uh, now here's examples of uh, companies in Pennsylvania that financed a bunch of deals most of which involve PETA and, e and uh, MELF, none of which use tax exempt financing, and it's really a shame. But here's a, a company, Aggressive Grinding. Obviously, they do grinding of materials. Uh, they qualified. Gardner, uh, Denver, uh, they, I think they were involved in, in uh, fluids and pumps. You know, they qualified, but they didn't use it. And this is all stuff I get off of uh, newpa.com's website, which is DCED, Department of Community Economic Development. Uh, this is a company, QPSI, the company that thought they were going to exceed the $20 million rule, and they didn't take advantage of it, and they actually wound up losing $450,000 over the life of the loan. Uh, coal material, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with them, I think they might be in metals. Uh, so just to give you an example of Olympic Steel, that was another one. My final point is this, okay, is assume everyone, if you're in manufacturing, assume everyone qualifies for tax exempt financing, okay? Don't let anybody tell you. There are people out there that will tell you you don't qualify, it's not a good program, you got a lot of hoops to jump through. That's not the case. That's, that's the lender's job is to insulate you 
from all the hoops that you have to jump to to, to do that for you. Questions? Anybody want to talk about a project they're working on? No, I'm just trying to figure out why I've never heard of this. Why they never heard of it? Yeah. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, I joined Customers Bank March, I think, of 2009. Okay? And I worked for a guy uh, at the bank. And it took me a year to convince them that they should do this. And you know what they kept saying to me? They kept saying, if this is so good, why aren't all the other banks doing it? And I said, it's because they don't know how to do it, and they don't even know it exists. So in Pennsylvania, I, I'll tell you, we basically have a monopoly in this program. There's maybe three or four lenders throughout the state, individuals, uh, that do this. So it's good for us. Good question. Yeah, I want to show you guys something. Uh, you have a couple questions here, Sam. Okay. Good question. Do we have to, I know some banks require you to move all your uh, current accounts to your bank. So if we would go through you for this financing, would we have to move all our accounts to your bank? No. We hope someday you would like to, <coughs> but not have to. Um, any other questions? My question is, are we, do PETA, we have the small business, and you said we don't have to jump through the same hoops that we did for them. What hoops do we, will we have to jump through to do a tax exempt? I mean, what are the requirements? The same <laughs> hoops you would jump through if you went for a commercial loan to net pay. Okay. Exact same hoops. Because what we're doing is we're doing a commercial loan that has a tax exempt component to it. So, you know, typical bank, they want three years of financial statement, personal, uh, you know, financial statements, personal tax returns, uh, description of the project, and then you just do it as you would any other commercial loan. Now, would this be able to be used to, uh, in effect, refinance <coughs> capital loans that you have? No, you, you can all, the only thing you can refinance is an existing <coughs> tax exempt loan. So if you need pretzels, wanted to refinance their tax exempt loan that we closed in October, they could do that, okay? If they have another loan on another property that they want to include in their refinancing, they can't do it. You can only refinance tax exempt loans. Good question, everybody. You can't really see this that well, uh, but this is all the tax exempt money that's available to each state throughout the country. There was, in, in 2012, there was $88 billion in tax exempt money available. And the unfortunate thing is we only used 15% of that. And the problem that that creates is that the manufacturer winds up paying on average 2% more to the bank, and the bank sends that money down to the U.S. Treasury. Because what tax exempt financing is, at the end of the day, it's the bank doesn't have to pay any income tax, either state or federal, to attack on a tax exempt loan. And because we don't have to do that, we pass it on to you. Okay, that's how it works. And the sad part is, is that if you don't use it, the money winds up going down to the U.S. Treasury. And you know what they do with it. Go ahead. How long does the process usually take if, say, okay, we have a project and we want to go forward with it from start to finish, doing the paperwork and things like that? How long does it usually take? I would say about 40% less than it would a PETA or a MELF loan. Uh, I'm guessing 60 to 90 days, you know, it depends, you know, like if you give your financial statements to the bank, you know, and then they say, well, we need the uh, uh, invoice for equipment, and you might say, well, we didn't, we didn't finalize that yet, and, you know, things like that slow the process down. Uh, but if a lender has everything they need, 
60 days should be plenty of time. Now the rate that the bank will charge you is the same, they, they figure that out the same way they do any other commercial loan. You know, it's based on the strength of your balance sheet and income statement, okay? So a range for tax exempt loans is anywhere from two and a half to three and a half percent. You can fix the rate for up to 10 years. Or you can go floating if you want. Most people don't. But even after the 10 years, as, as long as you don't violate any other provisions for tax exempt financing, the next 10 years it'll be a tax exempt rate as well. Great questions. Are you starting to see the economy change and more businesses interested in jumping on the bandwagon here for expanding? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, in Pennsylvania, I see a lot of manufacturers expanding. Yeah. Manufacturing in Pennsylvania uh, is, I think, getting stronger each day. Yeah. And I think some of the people that are here today can vouch for that, but yeah, it's getting stronger. Anything else? Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, please tell your friends in manufacturing that if they're doing the project, they should consider tax exempt financing. Don't let anybody discourage you. Thank you for your time.